Hi, today I'm going to read Wilma Rudolph by Isabella Sanchez Vergara. One summer day, a little baby arrived to a big and loving family. Her name was Wilma, and she was the tiniest baby in Tennessee, or so her 19 siblings thought. Wilma caught almost every disease that came through town, but things got even worse when she was just four. One day, her left leg began to turn in and become twisted. She had contracted an illness called polio, and doctors said she would never walk again without a leg brace. But her mother told Wilma that she would, and Wilma decided to believe her. Maybe Wilma needed her brace to move around for now, but she promised herself that one day she would run even faster than a gazelle. Twice a week, Wilma and her mom would go to the hospital. They had to sit tight at the back of the bus for two long hours while white passengers sat comfortably at the front, but they never missed an appointment. Back home, her brothers and sisters would take turns rubbing her leg, just like the nurses did at the hospital. For five years, they gave Wilma four massages nearly every day. That's around 7,300 massages. Finally, her family's care and attention showed results. By the time she was nine, Wilma no longer needed her leg brace, and once she took it off, there was no turning back. She had always wanted to play basketball, so the first thing she did was ask for a chance to join the girls' high school team. Wilma scored 803 points in less than a year, setting a record and leading her team to the state championship. One day, a coach named Ed spotted Wilma playing and invited her to join a summer college program for young athletes. Soon she was running so fast that if you blinked, you may have missed her. She was the youngest member of the U.S. team at the Olympic Games in Australia, where she won her first bronze medal running the 400-meter relay. But she knew that next time she would do even better. Four years later, Wilma went to the Olympics in Rome. She became the first woman to win three gold medals. Her success made many girls realize that sprinting was not something only boys could do. When she returned home, the governor planned to hold a welcome parade for her. Wilma attended under one single condition. People of all colors should join the celebration as one. And many athletes found inspiration in the story of Little Wilma, the girl who fought against all odds to become the fastest woman in the world, the one who knew greatness lives within each of us. Wilma Rudolph, born 1940, died 1994. Wilma Rudolph was born a preemie in Tennessee as the 20th of 22 children. She weighed just four and a half pounds when she was born. As a child, she caught pneumonia, scarlet fever, and then polio. She survived polio, but it made her left leg paralyzed and she needed a leg brace to walk. Wilma's family didn't have much money, so she had to travel on a segregated bus to a hospital 50 miles away to receive weekly treatment. At home, her older siblings massaged her leg to get the blood flowing. Doctors said she wouldn't walk again, but her mother told her she would. Her mother was right. Through the dedication of her family and Wilma's own determination, the treatment worked. After five years, she took her leg brace off and walked by herself. By the time she was 12, she had challenged every boy in her neighborhood to a race. Wilma then joined her school basketball team and was scouted by an athletics coach. In four seasons, she never lost a single race. By 1960, she was ready to go to the Olympics in Rome. She won all three of her gold medals in the 100 and 200 meter sprints, and also the 400 meter relay. Her achievements were groundbreaking. 
She was the first American woman to win three gold medals and one Olympics and was nicknamed Gazelle. She challenged what people thought was possible for women to achieve in athletics. When she returned home, she used her success to insist that any celebratory parades had to be integrated rather than segregated. Wilma retired from athletics on a high. She graduated from college and spent the rest of her life teaching the next generation that they could do anything.